Hi, I'm Teo Nikolakis with Audioholics, and in this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to automate your AV setup with triggers. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. You may be wondering, what's a trigger anyway? It's real simple. Triggers are simply used to automate turning on devices on or off in a home theater or an audio system. Typical items that control triggers are AV receivers, preamp processors, whole home audio systems, and even projectors. And the type of equipment that you can turn on or off with a trigger includes power amplifiers, 4K UHD media players, source devices. Uh, we talked about projection screens and also zone amps, subwoofers, and much more. The way triggers work is pretty simple. Once you power on the controller, like that AVR or pre-pro, it then activates powering on anything that's connected to it, power amp, etc. So why don't I tell you a little bit more of how you connect a trigger and then how they work. What do you need to get started with setting up a trigger network? It's pretty easy. The first thing you need is a trigger enabled controller like an AVR or processor. As I mentioned, the way that you'll know is you'll have one, two or three labeled and dedicated trigger outputs. It's extremely important that you only use a trigger cable in a trigger labeled input or output. Now, the second thing that you need is you then need a trigger enabled source that you want to power on or off. Again, the subwoofer, the projection screen, the power amp, etc. And then the third thing you need is a trigger cable. Trigger cables, thankfully, are nothing major. All they are is a 3.5 millimeter mono cable. You'll know if it's a trigger compatible cable because it'll have a single black strip on the tip of the 3.5 millimeter cable. I will caution you and advise you against using stereo cables. The way you know something is mono versus stereo is a mono has a single black stripe, a stereo has two black stripes on the cable. You don't want that. If you do use a stereo cable, you may have some reliability issues with your trigger network or worse, it just won't work at all. Getting your trigger network set up is really simple. It's as easy as one, two, three. Number one, plug the trigger cable into the trigger output of your controller, your AVR or processor. And then you take the other end of that trigger cable and you plug it into the trigger input of the device that you want to control, the power amp, the subwoofer, etc. That's it. Now I will have one caveat for you. If you are using a power amplifier, sometimes power amplifiers have on their back an additional switch that you need to be attentive to. It'll typically have three positions and be labeled off, auto sensing or automatic, and then finally trigger. You wanna move that switch into the trigger position. What that does is that then enables the power amplifier to be turned on with a trigger. Off, in case you're wondering, uh, activates the power amplifier manually through the front or the side on button, and then auto sensing will turn the power amplifier on when it senses an audio signal. And if that's what you have, you probably already discovered that sometimes it doesn't work too well. You have to have the volume turned up a certain way. That's why triggers are so important. So those are the three things you need. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn to some additional conditions that you can get really granular and fine tune using an Anthem AVM9 and an Denon uh, X8500HA as examples. And what I'm gonna do with these two examples, you'll be able to use regardless of the AVR processor that you have. Again, an Anthem, a Denon, a Marantz, whether you have a Yamaha, a Sony, an Onkyo, an Integra, etc. So let's get to that. Some devices have only a single input, but others you'll notice have a trigger input and output, allowing you to daisy chain devices together, and others like the Benchmark AHB2 power amp have bi-directional triggers. Devices with a trigger input and output allow you to daisy chain them together, thereby taking advantage of a single trigger output from a controller. 
daisy chaining too many devices like a power amp can cause a rush so you want to be careful when you're designing your trigger networks advanced and expensive processors like the focal astral 16 or storm audio allow you to set independent delays on each trigger alternatively some folks like to use triggers to power on power conditioners which have their own built-in soft start and delays if you're connecting multiple devices the bottom line, anytime you're triggering multiple devices, it is a network and you always want to make sure that it's designed properly. Maybe you're wondering, well, what do I do if I only have one trigger output or I need more or my AVR Pre-Pro doesn't have any at all? Well, the good news is that there are trigger expansion modules available online and they work in one of two ways. Number one is you can take the trigger out from your AVR Pre-Pro and plug it into one of these expansion modules. And the example that I'm showing you right now is the Emotiva ET3 trigger expansion module. You just plug the trigger output from your AVR Pre-Pro into the input here, and it gives you three additional trigger outs. Conversely, this unit is also a standalone trigger, so you can simply use the included remote control, and it gives you three independent trigger outs that you can utilize uh, normally. Let's look at the Anthem AVM90 first. The Anthem AVM90 has three trigger outputs. Whatever unit you're using may have one, two, or three trigger outputs, but the concepts are similar. Where there's anything different about the AVM90, I'll point that out. The first thing that you want to understand conceptually when you're using triggers is the trigger control. This is something that is unique to Anthem and other high-end products, and that is whether you want to use this menu below or you want the trigger to be activated via an RS-232 or an IP command. That's not the case with um, the Denon or the Marantz units as an example. So in this case, I'm going to keep it to menu. And now what I, the next thing that I have is my power condition. So I have specified here that my trigger one, I want it to turn on anytime the main or zone two are powered on, regardless of what input is selected. The reason why I have that is trigger one for me is where I have my left and right power amps connected. So those are my benchmark AHB2. The moment that I power on the main or the zone two, I know I'm always going to have a stereo music or stereo signal playing, so I want that powered on. For trigger two, I have a slightly different condition, and that's where I have my multi-zone, or sorry, my multi-channel power amplifier connected. I don't always want the multi-channel power amplifier turned on. I only want it turned on when I know I'm gonna have multi-channel content. So in this particular case, again, I have it set to menu, so any of the conditions I set below are active. And in this particular case, I don't want trigger two activated once I turn the unit on. Rather, I want trigger number two to be enabled anytime I have my Apple TV 4K, my Oppo UDP 205, or my Cambridge Audio Streamer enabled, uh, inputs enabled. So therefore, that's why you see the main or zone two are selected here as options. So anytime I have the main zone or zone two powered on and selected to Apple TV 4K or the Oppo or the Cambridge inputs, then it will activate that trigger. Anytime I select any other input, the trigger will be powered off or remain off. Now let's look at trigger number three. And it's the same thing. I only want my Oppo UDP 205 turned on. And in this particular case, what I've done uh, is I've selected the main or zone two in the UDP 205 input to do that. So pretty simple. Controlling triggers on a Denon or Marantz unit is likewise just as easy. Once again, I'm in the web interface and you can do this via the mobile app or the on-screen. And what you wanna do is go to general and then you're going to see trigger one and two output as my particular model Denon has two trigger outs. In this particular case, what I have is I again have a multi-channel power amp and I want that multi-channel power amp to be turned on anytime I have the main zone, zone two, or zone three powered on plus any of the available inputs. Now trigger 
Two, and this is where it's a little bit different with a Denon or Marantz, is if I want to have my OPPO UDP203, which is what Trigger 2 is connected to, to be turned on only when the main zone is turned on and that input is selected, then what I'll do is I'll have main zone powered on and then I'll leave the OPPO UDP203 input selected as on and then turn all the other inputs off. Now Trigger 2 is configured, so once I power on the main zone and I select the OPPO UDP203, then it'll, it'll activate Trigger 2. If I switch to the cable or the DVD or the Rune Nucleus input, it'll then send a signal uh, to power off the OPPO. So triggers are literally that easy, that simple. And these concepts you can apply to any brand that you might encounter. Anytime you have a trigger network, you always want to test to make sure that it works exactly the way you want it. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to do a test with the AVM90. I'm going to power the unit on as you can see, and you're going to see that the benchmark AHB2 power amps automatically power up. And because I'm loading the Apple TV 4K input, which I designated for my multi-channel, you're going to see my two multi-channel amps, the Monoprice and the Lexicon both power up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the OPPO UDP input and voila, you see the OPPO start to power up as soon as I switch to the input. And because I have designated that trigger to be specific to the OPPO input, now if I switch to another input, watch what happens, and the OPPO automatically shuts down. And then when I'm done, I just power off the anthem and everything shuts off. That's the power of a trigger. So triggers are literally that easy, that simple. And these concepts you can apply to any brand that you might encounter. So hopefully that was a super helpful way to teach you how to use triggers to automate your home theater equipment and environment. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You'll get direct access to us, you can ask questions, and you can even suggest topics for future programs.